Coming up on Network Africa. Protesters return to the streets in Togo. And Angola's ruling NPLA party wins general election. And South Sudan's government describes the U.S. sanctions on three leading officials as unfortunate. Hello and welcome to the program. I am BC at Debayo. We start in Togo where demonstrations by anti-government protesters have entered a second day in the country's capital, Lume. They are calling for the immediate resignation of President Fori Asigbe, the current head of a half a century old political dynasty, rejecting the government's move to introduce term limits. Today's protest in different cities across the country has been described as unprecedented in scale. Togo's cabinet adopted a draft bill to bring back the term limits on Tuesday. Yasigbe has ruled the West African nation since his father died in 2005 after 38 years in power. The late Yasigbe Eyadema passed a law in 1992 limiting the president to two terms in power, only to scrap it a decade later. And in Tanzania, opposition MP Tundulisu has been shot in the capital, Dodoma, is now being treated in hospital. The Tanzanian opposition MP suffered multiple wounds and is now being treated. Mr. Lisu of the Chidema party has been arrested several times for criticizing the government and inciting public disorder and on several occasions has called President John Magufuli a dictator. Over now to Angola where results show that the ruling MPLA party has won the general election gathering 61.07% of the vote. The results mean Wao Lorenzo of the People's Movement for Liberation of Angola will be the next president of Angola, replacing Jose Eduardo dos Santos, who governed the country for the past 38 years. The main opposition National Union for the Total Independence of Angola took 26.67%, with a small opposition party winning 9.44%. UNITA, which has repeatedly complained that the electoral process has been non-transparent and illegal, declined to comment after the results were announced. Speaking earlier on Wednesday, the spokeswoman for the National Electoral Commission, Yulia Ferreira, rejected the opposition's complaints as having a lack of clarity and objectivity. Now let's talk more about the Angolan elections with the former High Commissioner to Namibia, Ambassador Adeboyega Ario. Ambassador, it's good to have you on Network Africa. Thank you for having me. Now, while Lorenzo belongs to the same party as the uh, uh, outgoing president, was he really the people's choice at the election? Well, if mathematics will help us in this matter, he has scored 61, 62%. Which is a, a very is more than a B. It's a B, so which means the people voted for him. And I could see people jubilating about uh, his election. And again, it argues for stability and continuity in, Abu, in, uh, in Angola. What we wanted, you recall, our head of state, Lejera Mutala Mohamed, sacrificed his life uh, because of uh, MPLA Augustinetus. Uh, government and it's a credit that there is a continuity and it should be of interest to us in Nigeria for our foreign policy establishment we will see our people who recognizes the role we played so it's a good thing for us in Africa and for, for us in Nigeria and also for uh, many African countries and for sure I can assure you that the agenda of the Western countries in southern Africa has been nailed again here in Angola. The agenda is to have a change, and once we have a change of government, for the, the opposition obviously will be dancing to the tune of the, of the West, and that is not going to be in our interest. Uh, we welcome change, like we have change in Nigeria, but the MPLA 
they are also uh, going to do introduce uh, changes. Like uh, the new president has said, he's going to face the economic issues, care and seriously. And that is to bring the dividends of uh, democracy back to the people. And I think that will be all right uh, for us. I don't, think, I don't see any problem in, in it. In uh, Namibia, uh, you have SWAPO dominating also. And that is also good for our foreign policy, Nigerian foreign policy. And I'm sure ANC will do the same thing in, in Southern Africa. Zimbabwe, of course, is doing that uh, for that long. You may argue about uh, um, Mugabe being there for a long time. Well, fine. The Queen, who is the head of state of uh, Britain, has been there for, God knows, 1956, and he came to Nigeria. So I don't see what is the problem uh, no. in, in this matter. Now, do you see him wielding any power, looking at the fact that the veteran leader Dos Santos will continue as the head of the ruling party? In Japan, there is a process in Japan. We call it Troika. The former, pres the former prime minister, the immediate past, and the current one. Once there is a big issue, they all participate. They come together. There is a process of continuity in that country in Japan. The same thing is happening in Namibia. Swapo, um, um, Sam Juma, uh, Ifikepo Puhamba, and you now have Agig, Gingo, from different parts of the country. So they meet also. You see, the party, there, there is no problem as far as I'm concerned. The Santo will continue to, uh, you know, you don't buy experience. You know, you have to live through it. And so when you are, you are a newcomer, somebody will come, and there, is a, there are problems, you just speak to him. Fapile, they are from the same party. They have the same philosophy of governance. So it's OK. I now, don't see any problem. Now let's look at the man Dos Santos, who's been in power for 38 years. And we've seen this, of course, in so many other African countries. Why yeah. does it appear that African leaders always, are always reluctant to relinquish power? Well, I don't think you are going to talk about reluctance of living power by Angola now because the people, 62% of the vote. In uh, Zimbabwe, they did the elections some time ago. Over 90% of the people voted for Mugabe. In uh, Namibia, the election also, the, the, it was almost 80 something percent of the people. So, where the people accepted their leader? to continue ruling, they, there is no question about it. Like you have in Togo now. There is a problem in Togo because the people are not, they are not satisfied. That's why they are on the streets. And once there is a, if you have a concession, a, a concession or a concession, a concession that says S a number of times, fine. In Namibia, they have for two times. I remember Sam Juma wanted to do the third time and it was canceled. They say two times. Uh, uh, in Nigeria, we had the attempt to make two times. It was not acceptable. Anything that pleases the people, I think that's what we should be arguing for in Africa. We should not be legislating, following the Western culture. We are still taking us to. We are still doing follow, follow in Africa. In everything, we should sit down and do. I belong to Pan-Africanist movement, and uh, our thinking is that we need to reorganize entirely uh, the philosophy of governance. We need to look the structure of governance, the type of constitution. The way we should do things is to it must reflect African tradition. In Africa, do you have this type of thing before? And yet we had democracy in Africa, even before the colonialists came. Yeah. Um, many thanks for coming on to Network Africa. Former High Commissioner to Namibia, Ambassador Adigbo Yiga Ario. Thank, Thank you for coming on the program. God bless you. <clears throat> and in South Sudan, the government has described the U.S. sanctions on three leading officials as unfortunate. Well, the two senior South Sudanese officials and the country's former army chief have been sanctioned by the U.S. in a warning over increased attacks on civilians. The Information Minister Michael McCray, Deputy Defense Chief Malik Rengu and the former head of the Army General Paul Malong have been banned from traveling to the U.S. and had their assets frozen.
Three companies owned by the deputy defense chief have also been targeted. The U.S. country said the men had abused human rights and tried to derail the peace process.